it is that time of the year and we are back with the list of top 10 best indian movies of the year 2022 a very exciting year around cinema when we were back with the bang at the theaters after 2 years while the rising allegiance of ott viewing experience continued as well as always let's mention again that the list comes from a position of personal choice and is not a verdict If you feel any other films should have made the list, do mention them in the comments. But don't be upset with us here, as we are all expected to differ in taste and choice. We also want to mention that we could not get an opportunity to watch Meeva Santrao, the critically acclaimed Marathi movie, which we feel from the available reviews that it would have made our list. Before we jump into the list, here's wishing you a very happy Christmas and a marvelous New Year. While also reminding you that we are quite close to the 10k subscriber mark, we are within touching distance now. So help spread the word, please. Also, thank you for your continued support for the past couple of years. We couldn't be here without you. So without any further ado, let's jump into the list. At number 10, we have a tie. Because we could not leave out any of the two movies, we would speak out. The first one is Janagana Mana by Dijo Anthony. One of the bravest films of this year which challenges everything we see and perceive in the world around us through the lens of social media, news, personal biases and agenda-driven politics. Riding on brilliant performances by Prithvi Raj and Suraj Venjaramudu, the screenplay of Janaganna Mana keeps you hooked across the length of the movie till the end. By when you realize you are actually part of some sort of social experiment all this while. Do check out our chat with director Dijo where we discuss about the film at length. The second film is the Kannada drama Hadinelan 2 directed by Prithvi Konanur. Our last video was a detailed discussion on the film so we won't go into a repetition here but let us emphasize how Prithvi does a Asghar Farhadi like analysis of the moral fabric of our society through his non-judgmental sofa more approach that again questions as the audience like Janagana Mana did The film is still not available for all of you to watch beyond festival circuits but we will keep you updated on its release plans At number 9 we have a tie again The first one among them is Ante Sundarani ki the Telugu romantic comedy written and directed by Vivek Athreya starring Nani and Nazri and Nazim the film is about Sundar and Leela an interfaith couple who try to convince their parents through deceits which eventually lands them in more trouble a very intelligent screenplay which gives an ample backstory to both our protagonists sets up the story organically the film rides on multiple societal subtext but never deviating away from the fun quotient that a rom-com promises The second film is another comedy about another couple but with a different twist and spice. Jai 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 Hey directed by Vipin Das takes down the toxic masculinity and absolutely shreds it to pieces. The story of two characters and their marriages becomes a universal story of patriarchal oppression which shows us the audience the mirror during its run time. Darshanal Ajendran is a delight as Jaya and Basil Joseph is a hoot. The film is now streaming on Hotstar. Go for it today if you have missed it on the big screen. At number 8 we have Shakun Batra's Gehraiya the depth and shallowness of relations the depth of deceits the depth of human emotions including fear all come across using the metaphor of a sea Gehraiya is a truly coming of age film which does not shy away from putting one of the most celebrated leading ladies as a flawed character driven by passion and ambition the film touches upon the hollowness of urban living the ever changing concept of love and ponders upon relationships limited to alliances of convenience the entire narrative sucks you in and never lets you go the music the set pieces the twists there's a lot of woody allen inspiration in shakun's theme and making and that can only be considered as a compliment for the lovers of cinema gehraiya is a journey that you need to take at number 7 we have the breakout hit of the year the film that wrote history at the box office and taught a lesson or two to the big budget production houses across the country kantara a supernatural drama directed by rishabh shetty is the story of a group of tribal people and their fight to preserve their culture land and eventually lives across generations kantara uses folklore of the land to create a riveting story of heroism while also tipping its hat to more subtle contemporary issues of land grab forests caste and class politics and the not so effective positioning of the state the climax is sure to give you chills as we discuss at length in our detailed analysis at number 6 we have vasan bala's wildly entertaining monica oh my darling vasan bala has created such a unique space for him in indian cinema that your faith in conviction and originality stays strong monica oh my darling is a tribute to hindi cinema with its quirky screenplay brilliant retro music excellent set pieces and enigmatic storytelling with cues and references to hindi cinema all along the brilliance of it all lies in the treatment of a relatively banal story elevated to a level of excellence that bollywood has been struggling at for a while with rajkumar rao in the lead radhika apte in one of the most memorable cameos and huma qureshi at her ravishing best monica oh my darling is a treat for fans of hindi cinema across ages with a massive repeat value which films hardly achieve these days 
At number 5, we have the movie which has raised hell across the world, winning accolades and awards, opening doors for Indian cinema in the West. Well, it's RRR. There's as Rajamouli Magnum Opus which adapts the story of two real historical freedom fighters and creates a world of spectacular visuals, actions, sequences and drama, giving its viewers a high which lasts for several days. Rajamouli has been quite the director for some time in Indian cinema now, specifically due to the scale of the filmmaking and the powerful visuals he can create with the right use of VFX. But with RRR, he has broken the shackles and unleashed a beast on the cinema lovers across the world who finally are able to appreciate Indian cinema for what it has been for years the drama the action the masala the dances it is so overwhelming to your senses that you cannot but celebrate it what a cinematic experience at number 4 we have a tie again well it's that kind of a year for indian cinema this year the first one is howdy velakka written and directed by tarun murthy we are yet to discuss at length about this brilliant film which we plan to do soon But for now let's just say that Saudi Velakka is an awakening call for Indian courts where cases run for years and decades. It is also a statement against our prejudiced selves often driven by first impression, one isolated event or origins of caste, class or religion. And it's also a tale of human emotion in the process, a rare film in today's dark bleak world which resurrects your faith in humanity. We promise guys we will be back with further analysis on the film as it rightfully deserves. The second film we have is the Tamil drama Kadesi Vivasai written and directed by M Manikandan. The story of the last farmer told through the eyes of a village and the bureaucracy around it. Kadesi Vivasai through its simple storytelling and honest filmmaking leads you to a point where rotten crops and axe trees impact you as much as deaths of close to heart characters in other films. It is a brilliant film with many other similar sequences that crashes on your brain and knocks at your heart. And in the process it digs out a portrait of India that we belong to only a few years back. Do check out our interview with Rachel Rebecca who plays one of the key characters on the making of the film. At number 3 we have Badhai Do, arguably the best Indian film on LGBTQ issues. And why do we say so? Because unlike all other films on this theme from India, Badhai Do gives us hope, inspires with its thoughtful treatment and believes in a better future. Firstly, it normalizes the queer community by characterizing normal everyday jobs for the characters, such as police officers, lawyers, teachers and clinic workers, who are also flawed and compromising themselves. Secondly, it brings out the families, their insecurities, tries to empathize with them rather than preaching moral science lessons. All this is done through excellent and entertaining screenplay, music and a stellar cast at their best. And that scene on the terrace between Rajkumar Rao and Shiva Chadda is the best we had this year. It is a must must watch if you haven't already. At number 2, we have the Malayalam superhero science fiction eco drama Avasavyuham, the RP documentation of an amphibian hunt, written and directed by Krishan. This is one of the most unique screenplay and storytelling that we have come across in Indian cinema. It is a rare film that goes deep into the problems of environment and ecological balance and still is a stirring social drama with superhero elements. The film also has a documentary style of storytelling with immaculate sound design and revenge drama elements. Ones who are yet to watch the film might wonder how can one film be all of that? And Avas of Yuham is exactly that wonder. One of those rare films from India which works at the level of the medium itself. Like Krishan tries to explain in this chat with us, there's even concepts of sound theory, data, and noise interspersed in between when he was working on the script. It's hard to explain, guys. You know if you know. Watch it on Sony Live if you haven't done that yet, and be assured that this one may go down as one of the best of Indian cinema in years to come. Now, before we reveal our top pick, we have a few special mentions. We have the amazing Gode ko jalebi khilane le ja riya hu again a film that works on the medium of cinema while never letting go its grip on the razor sharp social commentary but it's technically a film from 2019 which only got released this year after a long term of festival rounds hence in our special mention list the same goes for Prasoon Chatterjee's Dosto ji a film from last year that got a theatrical release in 2022 Dosto ji is that rare occasion to celebrate for the ever decaying Bengali film industry We hope Prasun brings us more glory and better days for Bengali cinema. And lastly, Master Mani Ratnam's epic drama Ponnian Selvan 1. You see Ponnian Selvan 1 feels like a few chapters from a much bigger piece of work. We love the film, but it left us wanting with a definite incomplete feel. That is the only reason we haven't discussed the film at length and are eagerly waiting for the second installment. But that does not take away from the majestic camera work, 
effective music, brilliant performances, and the vision of none other than Mani Ratnam. That's why we had to mention PS1 as a special inclusion on our list. Well, for our top pick of 2022, you might think you already know it. Nan Pakal Neratu Mayakkam, the new Lijo Joseph Pellisere film that we had anyway mentioned to be the best of the year in our review. Yes, we stick to that thought, but that's a film that only selected few had the opportunity to watch. That feels unfair if we call out a film that's largely inaccessible to be the best film of the year. So Nan Pakal it is, but there's one more that was accessible to all of us on theaters and then OTT. Tallu Mala, directed by Khalid Rahman, is our pick for the best film of the year. In this world of content being the king, Tallu Mala is that rare film which invests in form, treatment, and visuals with hardly any regard for a storyline. This is an audacious affair of colorful visuals, a wacky ride with its eccentric characters, and somewhere deep within, a commentary on the youth of today's Instagram generation. This isn't a film that demands explanation. It's one to experience on screen and get soaked into its pulsating world. Talumala invests on the magic of moving images on screen without worrying too much about the expositions as its filmmaking style gets you onto a ride of intoxicating enjoyment. The film takes some time to settle, but if you patiently wait with your seat belts on, you get hit by the thrill, beauty and sublimity of this film. They hardly make such carefree films for the sake of making and for the fun of it. even in the highly regarded arena of malayalam cinema hands down our favorite film of the year so friends that is all we had to share today we will be back soon with our favorite performances from indian cinema and the best of international cinema very soon stay tuned on filmkopath